Hey, how you doing? Hey, good, man. How you doing? Yeah, good to speak to you today. I really enjoyed the film. I watched it only this morning, so it's very fresh. Oh, yeah. uh, well, I'm going to just get started. I mean, I, what, I'll just begin by asking what it is about this this figure of Padre Pio that just appeals to you as a storyteller and has you kind of, that, that has this connection that, wants you, that allows for you to want to sort of tell his story on screen. I mean, he's a saint. He's, uh, you know, like a major figure if you live in Italy, I mean, in, in the world, but especially here, especially in the South. You know, I first came about him when um, he'd be like, uh, you know, you see a statue of him in every drug dealer's apartment. You know what I mean? I mean, he's like, the, you know, it's either Maradona or him, you know? So he was like in my world, kind of. And he also came from a place close to where my grandfather was born. So, you know, I had that kind of connection to him. And I don't know what would pull me to, I don't know what makes you, you know, you know, finally say, okay, this is it. But I did a documentary on him, you know, just to like kind of feel it out to see who and what, you know, the whole story is about the stigmata, the, you know, the, he built a $35 million hospital in the middle of nowhere. He did very long, you know, any part of his life would make a great movie. Yeah. So when doing the doc, were you thinking or had you, did you have the idea of, of it, of it being a kind of a narrative drama sort of in further ahead? Yeah, for sure. The documentary was kind of research, but we didn't know what, what did the, you know, what it was going to be, you know, because I had just done two films about people. I just done the film about Strauss Kahn and then I did the film about Pasolini. Pasolini. So then it was like, I, we were like on a roll of like, but you know, we didn't do it then. So we did the documentary right after Pasolini. And then, you know, it took a while to get this together. So, so I interviewed uh, Shia LaBeouf a few years ago, and he struck me as quite a, a meditative, very spiritual person already. How much did that help? And did you get that sense from him when you sort of first met him? I know you met him on, on Zoom. Uh, did, did that, and do you think that helped kind of inform the, the performance we eventually see? Yeah, well, he just had a conversion, you know. I mean, he just had a, a you know... A, a, he became a Catholic just months before, you know, which is like pretty much, I don't know how you play this guy unless you're a believer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, you know, he was the age, he, you know, you, you, you met him, you know, he's, he doesn't take long to, you know, for him to convince you he's the guy. Yeah. He had a good handshake as well. Well, I recall. <laughs> yeah. But you see, I mean, you mentioned obviously you kind of went through a kind of similar experience in real life to that which the kind of character does. I mean, in that regard, did it did it mean you had to just kind of allow him to navigate his own way to the character in certain scenes? Did it reach a point where there was only so much you could say and you kind of had to let him use his own journey to kind of do the acting in some ways? You know, when you get to the point of shooting, man, you know, you, you got to be doing a lot of talking to the acting, to the actor, you know. You're in trouble, you know. I mean, we come from the same place. I knew where he was going. He, 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 you know, he went right from us talking on Zoom. He just jumped to his truck and ended up in a, a Franciscan monastery. You dig? And where he stayed, you know. I mean, you don't learn how to do a Latin mass overnight. And it takes dedication, you know, that's part of who and what he is. What is more than the dedication was the journey of him, you know, terms with his, which is repeat. And we're not making a film about a saint here. We're making a film about a kid who's like, you know, being put to the test. Did you spend much time with any of the monks? And how how was that? Did you did you speak to any that knew knew your work? The, we were surrounded by him, you know, from the very beginning in San Giovanni Rotundo. I mean, we shot in the places he gave mass. We shot in the bed he slept in. You know, those are the, the guys from L.A. are in the movie. That's Those are all real monks. You know, they're not actors. I mean, they're actors now, you know. But I was going to ask. I mean, you've been very open about your own awakening and sobriety as well, in your own in your, in your own kind of life. I wonder, do, do you think your relationship with your craft and the material that now appeals to you has changed with that as a result? Are you making films now you could only make in this state of mind? That's a good question, man. I don't know. You know, I mean, uh, you know, 
being sober and, um, you know, your approach, I think, is more, you're just a better person to the people around you, you know? You just have your concentration, your focus, you know, your dedication to it. You know, you're not spending half your life trying to, you know, get high or, you know, um, <laughs> you know, recover from being high. You, you know what I mean? It's like uh, whether the subject matter changes, I'm not so sure. And whether my ability to make film, which is whatever it is, you know, you know, I mean, I did it out of a bottle. I thought I did, you know, I didn't get it out of a dime bag, you know, I thought I did, you know, I thought I needed those things, but I don't need them. But it's not, I don't know, you know, it's other people have to tell me how, you know, this, this shit's changed. But you know. It sounds like you've just really like embraced and like you've got so much fulfillment now out of, out of the way your current sort of life, life is. Did you, did you, did you, did, you, did that, has that surprised you at all? The, the, the kind of the, the way you, perceive the world at the moment and in your life what that well you know i mean the, be, the difference between using and being sober for me is like 180 degrees mm. you know it's not even close you know whatever i thought i was searching for whatever you know i was uh, i was i was fucked up bro you know i mean you know in every way you know, how i lived and what you know i was under a I was delusional, you know, and then especially my responsibility to the people who care about me, the people who need me, you know, I mean, so. But the character Padre Pio in the film, I think he says he believes he was born four times. Do you, do you believe you've had more than one birth in your life? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a great line. I, you know, I still not sure what he means by that, but I'm, you know, <laughs> I was born four times. That's beautiful. Mm. I mean, you've never been shy of tackling kind of big themes and cha challenging kind of tales uh, in your in your in your movies. I mean, is there an added quite conscious sense of sensitivity when you deal with anything to do with religion as a storyteller? In which way, spiritual? In, in, in I just and just in terms of if, whenever you're depicting uh, sort of religious people or religious stories and themes on screen, I just wonder if you have to if you ever feel you have to. Tip -tip yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, I mean, he's a saint, but he's the, the guy we're talking about is not a saint. You know, when he shows up at San Giovanni Rotundo on the back of a, you know, a, you know, of a mule, he's no saint. You know, he's, 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 he's struggling, you know, you know, he's a kid with a lot of doubt. He's just a kid with a lot of, you know, big questions, to, you know, and, 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 you know, once shy is inhabiting that role, you know, and it's a doc, it's a documentary anyway. I mean, this film, we didn't make anything up. This is all, this is how it happened, you know? And we had a lot of, um, you know, source material, starting with his letters with Pod Pio was a beautiful writer. I mean, he's very expressive about what happened. These scenes that, we, all these scenes are just coming out of his stuff, you know, so. We got that, and then we got Shia, and we're basically filming him, you know. So I'm not thinking about filming anything other than the guy in front of me. If he's playing some great religious leader, I mean, that's, you know, or he's playing, you know, Strauss Kahn, or he's playing, you know, junkie in a fucking street. I mean, but, you know what I mean? We're going to give the same respect to a wino who's shooting that, you know, that we're going to give to Padre Pio. I think it's an incredible lead, uh, performance from Shia. I mean, I read, I know because you, you weren't too familiar with his work, but I read that you said you don't really watch too many movies. Is that a, a recent thing for you? Is that a disillusionment with current cinema of yours? I don't, I don't know if it's disillusionment. You know, I mean, like you said, I shoot, I work a lot at it. I'm done. And I'm, I just, Reading, man. I love the act of reading, I love what it does for me, you know. So I just get my money's worth more reading a book. You know, I like, you know, I like movies, but you know, make them a day you're looking at them different. You know what I mean? And how's the um the documentary on on Ukraine coming along? Are you still working on? Is that still? Yeah, no, no, no. We're we're cutting it now. You know, we're editing it now. We're um, 
Mm. We're also working on a Patty Smith documentary on Patty Smith. Oh, cool. Is that simultaneous? And is that is that quite is that usual for you to have a couple of things going at the same time? No, nah, I wouldn't say usual, but you know. We usually the documentaries usually kind of run alongside the features, you know, but doing two at the same time, that's a little, but it did not, did not like that. You know, they're, you know, the war in Ukraine is not going anywhere. You know, it's like, you know, I feel like we need to keep shooting it. I mean, it's not like we, we don't have like a, like, I'm not looking at us like we're going to have a 90 minute, uh, you know, of clarity on what's going on there. You know, I mean, that's happening before our eyes. Same thing with Patty, you know, film in different places, doing different things, you know. Have you been to Ukraine as part of this process? Yeah, we were in Kiev last year. How, how was that for you? It was fucked up, bro. You know, it's fucked up. I mean, they're out and out. You know, it's it's a war. People are getting killed, you know. And the Russians' way of fighting a war is to go after the women and children first, you know. Mm. And it's like to see it right in front of you is like, you know, it, it, it just blows your fucking mind, you know. The, you know, it's hardcore. It's, it's, you know, it's murder on a fucking industrial big scale. And it's, you know... It's, it's it's a fucking nightmare. I mean, have you um just in in, in regards because I know you're sort of living in the city. Have you adapted to life in in Europe? And do you, do you miss New York at all? You know, I don't miss it. I go back. I don't. I mean, I just don't. I lived there for so long. You know what I'm saying? And also, you know, I know New York changes and it's always different. And you know, the the, the pandemic really, really, you know, you know, the New York is always constantly changing. So I ain't passing judgment. I'm not buying into it. I'm not buying, you know, I'm not buying the grind. I'm not buying like a, I feel like it was a real estate, you know, the city was co-opted by, you know, between Wall Street and real estate. And, you know, it's a big money town and you need to have, you know, I mean, places I lived in for 500 a month are now 10,000. That's not inflation, bro. That's something else. And I'm not buying it. You know, I'm not paying $7 for an espresso. And I'm not paying $10 for a bottle of water. You know, I'm just not doing it. It comes down to the basic. You know what I mean? Why am I living here? Because it's the best coffee in the world. You dig? And it cost me one euro, one dollar. Okay. So why am I going to spend eight dollars for some shitty cup of coffee? But pizza as well. You know, really. What am I gonna do? You know, the cats saw my boys there. They're fucking working, they're working, they're slaving, they're, they're dying to live in some, you know, funky little fucking place. Okay, you're in New York, but what are you getting? What is New York? You know, is it a memory of something? Is it a, you know, I'm sure, but everybody I go to, I bring from here, they love the shit out of it. And they, can't, they can't get enough of it. So maybe, I, you know, I, you know. I lived there for 50, you know, 40 years. Yeah, that's enough. Somebody else's turn. Yeah, well, keep drinking that good Roman coffee. I've been to Rome. It's, you're right, it's good coffee. <laughs> <laughs> coffee. Um, anyway, uh, Abel, it's been a real pleasure speaking to you today. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much, man. Cheers. Okay. Have a nice rest of the day. Yeah, Take June 2nd, film is out. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, hey you guys. <laughs> hey you guys. <laughs> Hey, that's what they all say. Hey, you guys.